Can we open our mouths and begin to Hallelujah. worship the King of Glory, the mighty God, the beginning and the end himself. The Father, we give you praise. Thank you. For you are God all by yourself. The Father, we give you praise. Be exalted and have a Father. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Alpha, my beginning, Omega, my very end. You are one with you, be friend, only.
Praise the Lord. We shall be taking the hymn 196. When the trumpet of the Lord sound, the time shall be no more. Choir, please. be seated. Next, we'll be taking the opening prayer. And to lead us in the opening prayer will be Assistant Pastor Mrs. Bola Kokoko. Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we rise up for the opening prayer, please? Our Lord and our God, we exalt your holy name. Indeed, there is no one like you. You are greater than the greatest. You are higher than the highest. You are wiser than the wisest. You are the almighty God. You are the Lord of hosts, the man of war. You are the one who says yes, and no power can say no. And when you say no, no one can say yes. You are the God that says, let there be light, and there was light. You made way, even in the Red Sea. You brought the desert. Father, this morning we have come to appreciate you for the life and times 
of our dearly beloved sister. Father, we say, blessed be your name in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord Almighty, this morning, this moment, we pray, let the host of heaven come in your glory, come in your power, come in your majesty, as a welcome with hallelujah, our dear sister to heaven. And Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, at this service today, for anyone that is yet to have a relationship with you, that, Lord, you will touch them today in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, that this service today will be recorded in heaven as a glorious service, as a good farewell service for our dear sister. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that your presence be mighty in this place. Let your glory descend and let God himself come in his power and his glory and fill this temple in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We declare this service open in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Please, let's have our seats. Next this morning, we'll take our first Bible reading. And that Bible reading will be taken by Master Oluani Femi Olafison. The Bible reading will be taken from First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 8. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nifemi Olafison, and I would like to thank you all for taking the time to honor my mom today. I'll be reading from First Thessalonians 4, verse 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning which of them are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the death in Christ shall rise first. Then which we are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Well, next, we'll be taking a hymn. Uh, our next hymn will be taken from page six, Alleluia, the choir.
you can all please be seated. Uh, before we continue, can I just ask that we all take one minute, just check that our phone is in silence, please. Everybody just check that your phone is in silence. We don't want phone ringing during the program. Next, we will take the second reading for today. Um, the reading we're taking, and to do that, that reading will be Miss Oreodua Olofison. I'll be taking that Bible reading from Revelation chapter 14, verse 13 to 18. Good morning, everyone. I'll be taking the second reading. The second reading will be taken from Revelation 14, verse 13 to 18. I read, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the spirits, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in the sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Thank you. And God. May the Lord bless the reading of his words. Next, we will take the biography of the deceased, and to help us will be Brother Olomide Jones. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, my late sister, Bukola Bolajikola, Fison was born to the Jones family of Igori in Abelkita on the 31st of March, 1967, by the late Olufunshaw Jones and Viola Atoko Jones. She was the eldest of us three, that's myself and my younger brother, Shiro, sitting there. Uh, she attended Trinity Northern Primary School in Abelkita between 1970 and 1976. Abeokuta Girls Grammar School between 1977 and 1982. Open State Polytechnic Abeokuta, where she did her A-levels between 1982 and 1984. The University of Lagos between 1984 and 1989. And the Federal University of Technology away between 2000 and 2004, where she did her, her master's. She has a Bachelor's of Science degree in Geophysics from the University of Lagos and a Master's in Business Administration Project Management from the Federal University of Technology, OE. Uh, my sister, Bukola Balajoko Ni Jones, was a trainee in Chevron, Lagos in 1986, a mobile producer in Lagos in 1987. She did an NYSE in Shell Worry between 1990 and 1991. She then worked in the exploration department of Shell in Port between 1991 and June 1992. Uh, she joined an NPC IDS of Benin by the mid of 1992. While in an NPC, she worked in sundry sections at diverse times like IDS of Benin, IDS of Port Harcourt, Napims Lagos, COMD Lagos, up to our death. A deaconess and an ordained minister of the redeemed 
Christian Church of God. She also attended the RCC School of Dis uh, Disciples and RCC School of Bi Bible College until she was called home to glory at 1.30 p.m. on the 1st of October, 2020. She was the head of the welfare department of the RCCG, Prince of Peace Parish, Badore, Aja, Lagos. She is the founder and the chairperson of Bukola Olafison Foundation with the motto of affecting humanity through giving. Uh, the foundation was founded on Galatians 6.10, which says, therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Our objectives for the foundation were to empower and support widows, orphans, and the hungry at the same time, leading them to the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. She was a covenant daughter of Zion, a giver and a strong believer. She was a friend to the mothers of most of her friends. As a gift to humanity, she touched lives with forever living testimonies. Bukola, my sister, met her husband in 1991 in Port and they got married on the 23rd of September, 1995. She was, a, she was a committed and loving wife and a biological mother of two wonderful children. She was friendly and jovial with an infectious smile, loving and charming. She had a disarming smile, very detailed and very meticulous. She was extremely loyal to her friends as most of them date back to secondary school days. Uh, I'm sure I've seen a few of them here from the AGGS days. <sighs> she was the pillar strategist and the chief planner of the Wali and Bukola Olafison Dying Institute. Our hobbies included reading, photography, advising and counseling of teenagers and young people and traveling. To her husband of 25 years, she was Bukola, my wife, BMW, which is what he bought her on the birthday, the BMW. Big mommy to some, Bukki to some, and parish mommy to others. She is survived by her husband and her soulmate, Engineer Wali Olafison, her daughter, Oreo Lua, her son, Luani Femi an aged mother, my mom, Viola Toke, myself and my younger brother, Shio. This was not the plan, Ulubukola. We chatted, I said I was coming to see you. I got on a plane, got to Nigeria and this happened. But Uyolo, thank you. Thank you, Olomide. Next, the choir will take the administration now. You don't need no man to be the God you are. You have chosen to call me your own. You are the from beginning to the end. There's no place for I. You are the lover we sing. Can we all sing that? You are the love from beginning to the end. There's no place for a few things. You are God. You are God of my own You are God. Oh.
my grace. Oh, 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 oh. you already have my grace.
alone and that we can see in page 21.
Next, we'll take the exhortation. And to take the exhortation this morning, we need the zonal pastor for zone 10, Pastor Sheo Mopolachi. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I commiserate with uh, the families of Ola Pesant and those. My prayer is that the Almighty God will support you, will stand by you, and will comfort you on all sides in the name of Jesus. Shall we please rise? Please join me to take this song. I have a father almighty. I have a father almighty father. We hallow your name. We thank you because we have an assurance that we have a father who is in heaven. And with him, we don't have any cause to fear. With him, his presence will always be with us. With him, he will continually strengthen us. With him, he will always uphold us with his right hand of righteousness. Faithful God, we thank you. We bless your name because you are too faithful to fail us. You are too faithful, oh God, to disappoint us. You've proven yourself in our lives. And we have come to a realization that you are just too faithful. Father, we thank you. Mighty Jehovah, even as we go into your word, very briefly, we ask, Lord, that you please speak to us. The Bible says that the entrance of your word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Father, in understanding your word, O oh God, this morning, give us the right application into our daily lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. You may be seated. Please. please turn your Bibles with me to the book of Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. I'm going to start reading from verse 36 through to 39. Acts chapter 9 verse 36 to 39. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple called Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and arms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass 
in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Leda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him unto the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping, and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. Hallelujah. Very briefly this morning, I want to talk to us on the theme, what will you leave behind? It's a question. What will you and I leave behind after passing on to glory? During every funeral, like the one we're having currently, I do remind the congregation that funeral summons are for the living ones, the living souls. They are not meant for the dead. Our sister that is lying in the casket, she had done a bit. She had fought a good fight. She had finished her course. And she had kept the faith. What spoken in a hour of death can encourage the living to remain faithful to the Lord. In Acts chapter 8, verse 2. Acts chapter 8, verse 2. After the first martyr gave his life for the Lord, the Bible tells us that the devout man carried Stephen to his barrier and made great lamentations over him. Acts chapter 9, verse 36, which is our test for this service, tells us of a Dorcas, of Dorcas, a woman that is full of good works and charitable deeds. The Bible recorded that while at Joppa, she grew sick and died. The disciples washed her and placed her in her upper room. In verse 39 of that scripture, the Bible tells us that when Peter entered the room, all the widows stood by him. They were weeping and showing coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. So this godly woman was remembered for what she left behind. Beloved, what will you leave behind after your demise? It's a big question. And it calls for serious attention. The book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 13. Revelation chapter 14 verse 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Say, right. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Whatever you do, why you're on the mother earth matters a lot. Not only to God, but the people around you. Our works, we always follow us. So when you die, what will you leave behind? The book of First Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 7 says, We brought nothing to this world, 
And it is certain. I say it is certain that we can't carry nothing out. The fact still remains that everybody, every one of us, will die one day. So, when you die, what will people say after your exit? Because death is inevitable. Death is unavoidable. Death is certain to happen. Be prepared. No man knoweth when the Son of Man will come. Certainly not. But certainly, death will come. That is why you and I, we need to be prepared. We shall all give account of how we have spent our lives. And I want you to remember that life is not only a gift, it is a loan. Your life belongs to God. It's given to you for you to live in accordance with the counsel of God. So every man, every woman, we have to give an account of how you have lived your life. And that's the stewardship accounting. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 up to 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 8, Apostle Paul was not afraid to die because he was confident of spending eternity with Jesus Christ. He wasn't afraid at all. That was why he did his very best. He fought a good fight. And when he finished his course, he hands talk. He has kept the faith. No wonder in 2 Timothy 4, 7, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have Beloved, we need to ruminate over our lives again and again to be sure that we are on course. But if you come to a realization that you are not on course, you still have an opportunity to make amend before the owner of the life will come for it. Beloved, there are only two exit points from this world into eternity. Death and rapture. Where will you spend eternity? Where will I spend eternity? People quake whenever they hear of death because after death, judgment follows. That's why many of us were afraid of death. We should not be afraid of death if you have really prepared your house or put your house in order. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, Hebrews 9 27, it is appointed unto man once to die. But after this, the judgment. No matter how long you live in life, when death comes, even though we desire to live long, but that does not really matter. The life you live that is not impactful is not a good life. But when you live in consonance with God's counsel, God himself will be happy with you. He will welcome you Say, welcome my son. Welcome my daughter. Our sister that is lying in the casket, she had done a bit. Some of us that were here yesterday, we had numerous testimonies about her. I think 
we should pick it from there. And we retrace our steps. God, the creator of man, has an appointment with man. Hence, we must be prepared. The day of judgment will reveal the sincerity of each person's work. Good work will be rewarded. And unfaithful or inferior work will be discounted. That is why we need to be very careful. Walk in the righteousness of God. Walk in the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that when the honor of life will come, you will not miss it. In conclusion, Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to as his work shall be. Hmm. No man knoweth when the Son of Man will come. He will just come in suddenly, just like a thief. So when he comes, where will you be? Where will you spend eternity? The choice is yours. The Bible says that work up salvation with fear and trembling. So where do you want to spend eternity? You have a choice. I pray that the Lord will help us. The Lord will help us. And we shall not miss heaven. In the name of Jesus. Shall we bow down our heads as we pray? Our Father and our God, we want to thank you. We glorify your name, O oh God, for who you are. Thank you, Father, because we are the creation of your hands. Thank you because we know that you love us. You love us so much. So that you do not want us to walk into perdition. Father, this morning we have heard your word. Ask, O oh God, that you please help us. You will help us, O oh God, to meet up with your standard. name of our Lord. Thank you for your father. No continuous. Serve you the In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. No power of hell. No scheme of man. sinful life. No scheme of hell, device of the kingdom of darkness should make you to enjoy lives that will shut you out of eternity. There was time we spent here on earth. It's so small. If you stay here on earth for 150, 150 years, it cannot co be compared with eternity. 
somebody was asked to define eternity, he said one million times one million times one million years. That we're going to stay out there. Just the way your four years in the university, your five years in the university, six or seven years in the university helped you to live a good life afterwards. It's the same way your hundred years here on earth will impact how you will live trillion years out there. No scheme of the devil should make you to lose eternal life. Hell is not meant for you. Hell is not meant for any one of us. Sister Buki is looking at us and is begging us. She's saying, this place that I am, I want all of you to come there. You are here this morning. You want to make amends of your life. I sing this song to you again and I say, no power of hell. No scheme of the devil should hinder you from getting to where Sister Buki is. You want to make amends of your life? You want to live a life that is impactful? The scripture he read, one of it says, and your works will follow you. The fornicator, the adulterer. Whatsoever thing you are doing now that you know will shut the day of heaven against you and open the gates of hell for you, you can decide to stop it. There is no rule that says we all should live up to 150 years. It's not how long, but how well. The model that we have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is our model. He lived for 33 years. So with that, any man can live for 30 years, 40 years, and the red carpet is rolled out in heaven when he comes. This morning, I want to give you an opportunity to ask heaven and God Almighty that any power of hell holding me down Making me to live a life that is unacceptable to you. Lord, break that chain. Break that power. I want to give you an opportunity. To enter into a relationship with the God you are going to meet. Some people are afraid to die. Some people are ready to die. Some people will be afraid to meet God. Some people will smile to meet God. Some people... They will have a red carpet rolled out for them when they are getting to heaven. I want to give you an opportunity one more time this morning to make an amends of your life. Please close your eyes with me, everyone, and sing that song. No power of hell, no scheme of man. with me this morning and say, Father, every power of hell operating around me and in me, please destroy them. Anything that want to hinder me from ending up with you, Lord, remove it out of my way. Give me power from within to overcome every scheme of man, to overcome the flesh, to overcome the powers of hell in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and say something to God Almighty. Go ahead and say something to God. You are here this morning. You have never surrendered your life to Jesus. While everybody is praying, just lift up your hand. I want to pray with you. Just wave your hand to me and say, Pastor, I want to surrender. I want to start a relationship with God. I want to stop the kind of life I'm living. I want to start anew. I want to start afresh. God bless you. The heavens are waiting for you. It is when you surrender your life. 
that your name is written in the book of life. We heard about the books. There's a book. I, that is when your name goes inside the book of life. I want to start a new life afresh from today. Just wave your hand to the King of Kings and I want to, and I'll go to pray with you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. I can see your hand. God bless you, my sister. The heavens are seeing your hand. Where, where are you? God bless you. Today is your day. Don't postpone it. There must be a day you will take a decision, a firm decision, and stop and make a U-turn. Repentance is U-turn. Turning out of the former ways of life and starting a new life. Round up your prayers now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you for everyone whom the life of Sister Bokola have challenged. Everyone who this morning is at the verge of decision making. Everyone this morning who is saying, I don't like the way I'm living. Lord Jesus, please accept me unto yourself. I pray for them, Lord, that you will receive them unto yourself in Jesus' name. Forgive them of their sins. Write their names in the book of life. Give them the grace for a new life. Give them the grace to terminate the old life. You taught us that repentance is making a U-turn from former lives. Anything that have followed them up till today, any way of life, that will lead them to hell. Any power of hell that has been holding them down, which they are surrendering today and say, we don't want anymore. Lord, I pray the grace and the power to say no to the flesh, to say no to friends that wants to lead to hell, to say no to negative lifestyle. Father, grant unto every one of us this morning in the name of Jesus. For everyone gathered in this house this morning, Everyone that have heard the word of God, Lord, the grace to finish well, release upon us in Jesus' name. The grace to finish strong, release upon us in Jesus' name. Lord, the grace to live a life that is acceptable unto you, release unto every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be thy name. Blessed be thy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Bless you. Thank you so much. Those of us that signified our intention in surrendering our life to Christ, please commit your time to prayers, reading the word of God, and join a Bible-believing church where you will grow. They will teach you more of the word of God. I know along the line you have a friend. You know a friend. You have a friend who is a child of God. Please be closer to that friend. Let that friend help you to grow as you walk in the Lord. It's time to pray for the family. I'm going to invite the family to please rise up. Pastor Wally and his immediate family on both sides. The two families. Please rise up now and walk to the altar. Oh, Christ the Soli
Can I please appeal that we be upstanding and pray together? I'm going to ask and request that you stretch your hands forward to the brethren standing before us and commit them to the hands of the almighty God that the good Lord will keep them. The protection of the Lord will be upon them. The great comfort of the Lord will appear to them. Please remember the children that the Lord will be with them. Please go ahead and pray. Go ahead. Stretch forth your hands and pray for the brethren here. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want you to specially join me to pray for Olua Nefemi and Ore Olua. Very specially, originally they intended to come into this service, but for one reason or the other, they are not here. The fact that they are not here, you can imagine how they are feeling out there. Please close your eyes. Olua Nefemi and Ore Olua, please pray for them. Lift them up in prayer. These are the children of Sister Bukola. Just pray for them. They're not here for us to hug them. They're not here for us to touch them. Can we hug them with our prayers? Can we please hug them with our prayers? Can we ask that the God Almighty, the great comforter, will comfort them will be with them. Pray more, pray more, pray more. Say it more. Pray for them more. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Two more prayers to join with. I want to pray for Pastor Wale Olafisa, the man that has been sleeping alone for a while. Thank you for the friends that flew in to come and be with him. But after a while, they will go. They have to go back to London to where they came from. Ask that when they leave, even from now, great God of comfort will comfort him. Lift up prayers for him. Go ahead. <laughs> Round up your prayers. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, please join me to pray for the family on both sides. The immediate siblings of Sister Buki, the extended family from Ileife, from Abel Kuta, they have lost a gem. First of all, there's a way we lose somebody in the family and it, you don't feel it. But when somebody is, 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 a, is a tree in the family, when such departs, the whole family shakes. Please commit the family into the hands of God. Go ahead and pray. Just go ahead and pray. Just go ahead and pray. The family, both sides, and extended, both nuclear and extended, they have lost a gem. They have lost a gem. The church of God has lost a gem. The family have lost a gem. Round up your prayers now. Thank you, Father. In 
Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord, we pray because we believe you hear prayers. If we don't believe you hear prayers, or if you don't answer prayers, we won't pray. But we have prayed because we are confident that when we cry to you, our Father, you hear and answer our prayers. Lord, for every prayer that has been sent up to you today, in your infinite mercies, please hear and answer in the name of Jesus. We beg you, Lord, for every desire of Sister Bukola, for the husband, for Nifemi and Oreolua, every height they intend to get these children to in life, beyond their own imagination, let it be for these children in Jesus' name. Lord, we are not there with them to hold, to hug them. But you are there. We have sent prayers to them. We pray for them that you will comfort them deep down in the name of Jesus. We lift up Pastor Wally unto you, O oh Lord, our Father. We pray for him. A companion, a friend, and a partner of so many years have been plucked out of his side. Lord Almighty, the grace to bear this, to go through this period. Heavenly Father, we pray you will release upon your son in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that help from on high that will strengthen him from within, you will release upon him in the name of Jesus. The countenance of the Lord will rest upon you. The favor of the Lord will appear to you. The help of God will rise up for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for every member of the family on both sides. The siblings of Sister Buki. Their family. The family from Eleife. Lord in heaven, we lift them up unto you. And pray that you will comfort them. Amen. Lord, please comfort them. Amen. Lord, please comfort them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you will bring to an end. Incidences like this. From both families. In the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty. We pray for the church. We pray you will comfort the church. We pray you will comfort the church. Fill this vacuum, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, for everyone that have come to bid Sister Buki farewell. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we pray you will comfort every one of us in the name of Jesus. Everyone she came across in life, everyone she impacted one way or the other, everyone feeling a sense of loss right now, we lift them up unto you that you will minister to every one of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be thy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You may go back to your seat. Let's appreciate the provincial pastor for Lagos Province 23, Pastor Victor Guliade. Can we please put our hands together for him? Next, we'll be taking tributes. And we'll, be, uh, we'll take two tributes this morning. The first one will be from the Olaki Tongue. The second one from from the Jones family, and the third one will be from the church. 
So we would like to call Leia Lafison to give the first tribute. As you are fondly called by us, had most generously adopted those who met her directly or indirectly, and friends who today celebrate your life. You are, a mil you are one in a million, a woman of charity, a great disciplinarian, who prin whose principle and integrity were outstanding. The news of your transition was both sudden and deeply sad but also an occasion to praise, honor, and thank our God for having bestowed on us a very blessed, joyous, and fruitful life with you and your family and with all of us. Oh, our dear wife, mother, sister, auntie, and friend, how, how can we describe you that will be appropriate enough for your impact upon our lives. You are a sacrificial and selfless woman to all of us. You had, you had the ability and the gift to our peace, console and make everyone you talk to feel loved, convincingly, convincingly appreciated. You are a mother, a sister, auntie and friend who had time, not only members of our family, all of us whom you loved. To say thank you very much and God bless in Jesus' name. The next tribute will be for the Jones family and we call on Shion, Shoinka to come and give the tribute. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm just going to say a big thank you to Sister Buki um, for what she was to all of us. Um, she was a kind person, a kind person at heart. She was a very private person, but as private as she was, she would still reach out. cast my mind back to 1994, was it? I found myself in Benin, um, service here, and they threw me to one school um, to go and serve. And I said over my dead body, I will not go to a primary school. And a couple of my friends said, oh, um, we got redeployed to NNPC. I said, I don't know anybody there, but I'll go there anyway. So up I went. Um, got to IDSL. And the first person I saw was Sister Buki. And she said, what are you doing here? And I said, what are you doing here? And she said to me, I work here. I said, oh, really? Okay. Um, uh, I want to work here as well. I said, what's wrong with this girl? How can you just come and say you want to work here? Um, and she took it upon herself, even though I didn't have a letter of redeployment or anything. She took it upon herself to ensure 
that I was taking at IBS and, and Saba. And not only that, I lived with her for one year, you know. And something dynamic happened. Where she was living, she was a very quiet person. Nobody, she would go to work in the morning, come back in the evening. But because she took me on, everybody knew, you know, um, that somebody was around. But that's not the end of the story. She was a mentor. She kept on mentoring, you know, up until I left and all of that. And that's what she was to everybody in the family. Um, she was described as a strategist, a real strategist, a pillar of support. Um, we're going to miss her. We're really, really going to miss her. Um, I'd just like to pray for Baba Wale, as we all call her, uh, call him. Um, God who is able to comfort. Only him who is able to comfort will comfort you and every one of us at this very, very difficult time. Um, rest on, Sister Buki. Thank you. Thank you. The next will be from the church. I'd like to invite Deacon Amatayo. Good morning, everyone. Since yesterday, we heard good things about our sister, and um, it turned our minds. But for me, I see her differently. Many people see her as a giver, as someone who likes to carry the body of others. But I see her more as a home builder, as a body bearer. Sister Buki and my wife, they share the same name, Bola Joko. And beyond that, they look alike. Some people think they are sisters from St. Perez. So that draws closer. And in getting closer to her, she intervenes. We really share our family issues with people anytime we're having challenges. But this is someone that anytime both my wife and I are having issues, she will come in as a confidant. And by the time she comes into the issues, she will settle it and everybody will be satisfied and be happy. Beyond that, you know, people are fond of carving their footprints in sand. But she's someone who has carved her own footprints in the rock. Living at a dead blue mark, that's difficult to erase. Our work is speaking for her. And just as the pastor said yesterday, when the door is shut, what will be said concerning you? Jesus made his own impact within a short period. Sister Bukola impacted life, lives within the short period. We are not seen as past tense. We are seen as present tense because our works are speaking for her. And we are seen as future tense because our works will still speak for her. Now it's for you and I to learn from that. When the door is shut, will your work be spoken in past tense or in present tense or in future tense? I pray that man will speak for me in present, in the future. I pray same happens to all of us in Jesus' name. Thank you. Next, we will take the vote of thanks. And to take, uh, I would like to call Leia to come and take the vote of thanks.
Praise the Lord. I wrote some things down and I would like to quickly read them out. Bukola, Bukola Jokola Kisan. She's our wife, a mother, an auntie, sister, a friend, a woman of integrity who touched many lives since, who touched many lives since her past to glory on the 1st of October 2020. We have been overwhelmed by the outpouring of love from everyone and every part of this country and beyond. For this true hero, yet a simple woman. First and foremost, we as a family of the Jones and the Olafisons, we want to thank God, our creator, who allowed her to serve humanity in the way she did, a very selfless manner and in an exemplary way. We want to thank you, Lord, for the life of Bukola, Bolajoko Olafison, shared with us all. We must say that we are indeed lucky to have her in our family. On behalf of the Olafisons and the Jones family, we wish to say a big thank you to every one of you who came to this program, the service of songs tonight, that was yesterday and also today, to this funeral service to honor our beloved Bukola, not also forgetting those that are joining us on the internet as we speak right now. We sincerely appreciate your kindness to our family in this moment of grief. We want to appreciate specifically the RCCG family worldwide, the Amni International and their entire staff, the NNPC, its subsidiaries and the entire staff and other partner companies and staff not in our the way they did. God bless you all in Jesus' name. We also want to express our deepest gratitude to every friend and well wishers who are here today and also yesterday. God will strengthen you in the mighty name of Jesus. And at this point, I will say we wish you a safe journey back to your various destination as you return. Thank you and God bless you all in Jesus' name. Next, we will take our announcement and to take the announcement with the bio down, see. I hope I have together for him as he comes to the stage. because of um, the center um, protocol. But the body could be cited um, immediately after the service on the way to the cemetery. Um, that the interment is purely for the immediate family and the officiating ministers due to um, space constraints as well as the COVID-19 um, protocols. That um, no entity payment of guests at home after this service. That means the whole thing ends here. Um, the family wish to thank you all for your support and understanding of Nigeria Sirama. Thank you. I would like to appreciate everyone that has taken out this morning to be with us here today. Uh, the final thing we'll be doing here is to take the recessional hymn.
and that will be in 747, page 20. So please, before we take the hymn, I'd like to indulge us. After that hymn, the officiating minister, the family would leave. No other person should leave this hall before them. If for any reason you need to leave the hall, leave while the hymn is being sung. God bless us all. Let's stand up, please. You can just continue to give us uh, music while people exit. Give us chorus while people exit.
people, we have to vote now because we have to be there to vote them. I'll still bless you in the middle of the road when I don't know where to go. I'll still bless you in the middle of my storm, in the middle of my trial. I'll still bless you when I'm in the middle of the road and I don't 